everyone, welcome to the Final Cut, Mark the Movie Man here, and today we are looking at the live-action version of the classic 1995 anime of the same title, I'm talking about Ghost in the Shell. Here in the live-action version, we get a film set in the future, where we have Major, who is the first of her kind. You see, she was in a terrible crash, but she is now super cyber-enhanced to help fight the most worst criminals in the city. Well, uh, while she's uh, fighting all these criminals, she's starting to learn her true origins, and she's not liking it very much, and we see how everything is uncovered, secrets are revealed, Revealed and how she suddenly realizes who she really is. Rupert Sanders, who gave us Snow White and Huntsman, I know, warning, red flag, gives us a movie that visually looks like a live action version of the anime should. I, I think he nailed it with the looks visually, the production design in here uh, and the set pieces, especially those famous scenes, those iconic scenes from the original are replicated very well in this film. Some of them are tweaked a bit like the opening scene where she jumps off the roof. It's tweaked a bit, but I kind of like the feel of that. I liked a little bit of the variety, the difference that they made for that scene. But those uh, set pieces and those uh, places in the film look just like they were ripped from the anime. So visually they nail it, I think, quite a bit. Even the uh, little boats, the, the very important scene on the boat and in the water, they nail that look as well. Where the film falls apart though is pretty much everything else. Uh, the special effects in here I, I thought looked good in some spots, in other spots they looked a little sketchy, so that was a little uneven, but what really didn't work for me is the changes to the story. They took a film that you have to watch multiple times and to really get all the meanings and, and all the philosophy going on in the original and uh, the idea of oneself, they whittled all that down into a basic revenge action film with a very basic villain who doesn't even follow their own rules so to speak if you if you paid attention to the dialogue I just it, it, it just frustrated me because visually my brain's going this should be awesome but the story they're coming up with just blue it was so insulting why hold our hands you don't need to hold our hands the demograph you're going for with this have seen the anime and they want to see a live action version of it and visually yes that's what you got but as far as plot and a story goes, you didn't give us that. You gave us... Oh, man. Now, maybe it's Rupert Sanders' style because it felt a lot like Snow White and the Huntsman in many of these scenes of the, in how they were directed. I, I it just film On the ride home, this film got me more angry as I drove along. I'm like, a waste of potential for sure with this film. So, folks... If you're a fan of the 95 original anime, I would highly recommend you not see this film if you're expecting the same type of deep, interesting, make-you-think story that you got in the first one. If you're expecting it in the live-action version, you're going to be highly disappointed. If you haven't seen it before, you may go see, see it and go, eh. It's okay, but for me, I was highly disappointed. Can't recommend this. Wait for rental. It is a shame because there was a lot of potential here, and this film ends up becoming a shell of its former film. So, uh, yeah, there you have it, folks. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much for listening to my rambles on Ghost in the Shell. I appreciate every single one of you out there. It's because of you guys I do this. Thank you for your support, and until next time, remember, keep that ticket stub.